This is Twit. Microsoft just got a big contract with the U.S. Army for 120,000 plus HoloLens units, a contract worth $22 billion. Wow. What is it? Do you know what the Army is going to use? Schools. Yeah, that's I've, a that's huge. I have no concept. I've, they don't tell me anything. Um, <laughs> like, here's a, they're smart. Here's they're a picture of, of a soldier wearing a HoloLens. I, you know, it's a special Army HoloLens. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know that the HoloLens has been really successful in industry. It's one of those products that I think especially the way that it was originally introduced. And, and I was at the original launch and I remember talking to you know people on that team that it was very much made to be like, oh, this is going to be a consumer thing. And then obviously never was. Uh, some of the mixed reality headsets have had more of a consumer appeal, but never it hasn't really taken off that way. But it's been very successful in industries and we've seen it in construction and we've seen it in like logistics and, and other stuff. So I guess it makes sense that the army would want to do something with it, but they don't tell me anything. They're smart enough to like. <laughs> well, not let me tell read me the army's like uh, statement because they're a little more uh, forthcoming. Yeah. Um, they say the equipment is made up of high resolution. It's not your. It's not your papa's Hololens. It's made up of high resolution night, thermal, and soldier borne sensors, integrated into a unified heads up display. I mean, you could think if this thing is robust, this would be. And they they plan to use it both both for training, but also in combat. Uh, so that close combat force personnel can rehearse before engaging any adversaries. So it'll help you fight as well as train. And uh, you know, I've you've seen we've seen pictures of combat personnel wearing night vision goggles and things like that. Uh, if this thing is robust and reliable, huge benefit, I would imagine. I mean, maps, um, situational mm -hmm. awareness, thermal well, I mean, so, I mean, imaging—it it would be incredible. Well, I mean. I'll, I'll from if you look at the sort of certainly from the British Army's perspective, you know the ideal time to launch an attack is about four thirty in the morning because it's dark. You've got night vision; they don't, and you can get after it. I I gave a um, in fact I gave Twitter a very excitable interview after trying the first Hololens back when it was I first remember. launched. It was yeah. just like this is brilliant, and it it really is. If they've got it into a usable AR format, Microsoft could actually steal a march on this. Google tried it, failed. Um, Oculus tried it, has failed. Um, maybe it's Microsoft's turn. If you think about it, though, augmented is got, that's the way to go. You don't, I mean, the last thing I want yeah. to do is go into combat and not be able to see where I'm going. Right. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, so augmented to as a, as a resident soldier here, here's what's going to, what I think is going to be dope. And I, and I think every time these stories come up. That's right. You served in Iraq. I forgot. Yeah. Right. You're the expert. Well, Kuwait, but Kuwait. same thing. Okay. Um, the, the idea, the guys that are entering the service now grew up playing games yeah. like Halo yeah. where this was part of the deal. Right. So bringing their most training that they probably had more than anything else, some of us are still doing it, right? Um, being able to bring that environment to a soldier is going to make them better because you don't even, you won't have to spend a lot of time training that because a lot of the people have been training that for many, many, many Such years a good already point. in. Yep. So being able to know that, you know, my, my friends are on my six, they're okay know who has how much rounds they have left because of telemetry in their weaponry. I can be like, okay, this guy only has four rounds. Look, I want you to fall back and watch the back. Wow. This guy still has Think a full clip. That. I want you to cover what flank. I want you to cover flank. You know what I mean? So, like, I can take inventory. I can check on my guys. I can see my stats. I can look back, and I can be like, Laporte, your heart rate is up. Uh, what's going on? You good? And wow. you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Just a little wow. nervous. Okay, look, if you're nervous, I want you to pull middle and just watch aerial. Right. And I'll get somebody that's a little bit more situated to cover point. Right. You know what I'm saying? Other than guys lying and saying, no, I'm good. I'm good. And then not really able to do what yeah. they need to do. Yeah. Right. So as a sergeant and I'm running my platoon, if I got all of their data running by on the screen, I can make way better decisions. And it's OK, because a lot of guys, until they see their contact, they're nervous. Once they see their contact, they drop in, they're settled. They're, you know, what we call fit to fight. Right. So I would love to 
be able to see all of that or even as a medic like to get an alert from some situational thing on my head to tell me that you know someone's down i can get to them quicker do you, like what's there's your, so much i could do with this since you really have the perspective on this which i'm, I'm so glad you're here does it sometimes though could you get too uh dependent on tech I mean, I, especially in desert combat. No, instincts are instincts are instincts. I, you know, I get that. And that's a very common conversation about everything that we do. And I still say no, because at the end of the day, we're still humans and our instincts are our instincts. Like, I am a trained paramedic. Like, if you were to have a conniption fit right now, You'd I know what to you. do. You could right. reach out through the TV and <laughs> through the, through fix the me. Zoom and get you <laughs> yeah. squared away. No, I just, but, if, it's yeah. if it's reliable... Yeah. You know, I, I remember in, in Vietnam, I, I, I was lucky enough not to have to serve. My draft number was very high, but uh, a lot of my friends, and we certainly heard it about in the news, those M16s would jam, and there's nothing worse. You're in a firefight and your gun is jammed. I worry, and these are much more high-tech devices, but I guess you would train to both have them and not have them. Absolutely. Yeah, you, we train for all contingencies. Yeah. Like, we even train for what to do when there's no sound. Radio silence. So in all the games or in every movie, they make it a point to show you the <laughs> the hand signals. Those exist because there's times That's where right. you have to go radio silence, That's right? right? That's um, right, yeah. The reason why Night Vision Goggles was such a, a, a boom is because before, what we would do is throw a illumination to, uh, grenade in the air, which has a small parachute. It comes down and turns the lights on for a second. We can do what we need to do. Sometimes we just throw it take a look, okay, we know where everything is, and then go when it gets dark again. So there's, the, you always train for both aspects of it, so yeah. And uh, This has been, this, this is the same in the Navy as well as a sailor, I have to say. The U.S. Navy still trains officers to use sextants. Right. We have GPS. Yeah, right. You know, we have all this, we have LORAN, we have the rest of it, but you still need to be able to use, use a sextant because if it goes down, it really goes down. So. Excellent point. Excellent point. And, and by the way, Chris Williams had this story in the register, and one of the things he mentioned, certainly it is controversial, it's been controversial at Microsoft, even more so at Google, doing defense contract work. But I would hope, I mean, this used to be, you know, the patriotic duty of American corporations. You know, Ford started making tanks uh, during World War II to support our, our troops. I would hope that this would be a non-controversial uh, technology. Does, have you heard anything at Microsoft about people saying, oh, we don't want to be making this for the army? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know that there was, there was disagreement or, uh, you know, there was not everyone loved the, the Jedi contract. I'm sure that there are people who are uncomfortable with this as they would be with, with any sort of big contract that, that Microsoft has with any, uh, you know, corporation or, or, you know, government group. Right. Um, well, this is, a, I mean, this is twice the size of the Jedi. Team. No, I know. I know. I'm just saying there, there are 156,000 employees. So I'm sure that there are so some people somebody. who are happy. Yeah, yeah. There are some people who are unhappy, right? Like, I guess if you're a but, pacifist, uh, Brad Smith, uh, Microsoft president, uh, wrote, we believe in the strong defense of the United States and we want the people who defend it to have access to the nation's best technology, including from Microsoft. I think that kind of says it all. Um, and that's, I think, completely appropriate. It's, it's cool. My only concern would be, I don't think of the HoloLens as being rugged <laughs> so, right well but it looks like they've they've adapted they clearly that. Have I mean, ruggedized it, it, it seems yeah. what they've said right yeah. um and and i'm sure that with the size of the contract they'll do more r d on that like i i know completely different use case obviously but i do know that like they created hard hat versions of the hololens right. for construction right. sites that worked really well right. so they can adapt it uh obviously and, and they'll need to do more than that uh you know for people who are in different you know, conditions where where you might be using this on missions. It actually um, really makes you think uh, of the. I think this is a good, really good for Microsoft because it also makes you think of the how useful a Hololens would be in a variety of circumstances, not just right. fighting. I can see no, pilots totally. wearing I mean, these and all sorts. I mean, this is really. I was thinking sure. firefighters yeah. actually. Firefighters. When, firefighters when, when you're talking, for sure. yeah. I think firefighters would be amazing. I um I, I interviewed a, a New York City um, a, a battalion chief and got to know about what their process is for, for fighting fires. And so much of it is it's all information based and they certainly don't want to rely on technology because they have to do what's there in the field, but they can be aided by it. And so 
but you know, you think about like having thermal imaging and having, you know, access to maybe a map of, of what a location might look like or, or direct, you know, communications or, you know, oxygen levels or other things. Like it can be really, really useful for, for firefighters. Um, obviously they can't rely exclusively on that stuff. They still have to use their own instincts, their own knowledge, but having that, I think would be fantastic. And there are all kinds of you know, situations where if you have to adapt something like that to work in certain weather conditions and in certain, you know, like lower power, you know, or conditions where you might not have access to, to you know, um, a, a power supply or whatever, where you could really open up how this could be used absent, you know, of, of looking at it in a, in a military context. Yeah. And, you know, I might have, I can understand how somebody working at Dow Chemical might have had problems with napalm. But this is not that kind of a technology. This is a technology that'll save lives, um, and and you know, with the, look, it's not a peaceful world, and uh, sometimes the best path to peace is a strong defense as well. So, I I think this seems like a very good thing all round for for Microsoft, for the Army, and for future uses of the Hololens. I'm glad to I'm glad to hear about it. Um, anyway, I, oh, and it would be nice if you could put Cortana in your earpiece and she could say, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I just like when I play Halo, I expect a little help. Not anymore. Cortana's gone. On oh, I was going to say, didn't we just kill Cortana? Yeah. 